Um, my name is Renee Beasley, um, and as Shannon said, I am the program manager at Phoenix Academy, and uh, Mr. Philip Elliott is our principal, and he is going to uh, participate with us and share the um, presentation with us. Um, so I do want to just start by saying that we do have a unique set of challenges at Phoenix, and for those of you who do not know, our school is located in Annapolis. Um, but our families are spread throughout the entire county of Anne Arundel County. So all the way up north um, in Brooklyn, right by Baltimore, all the way down south to Lothian and Harwood and literally everywhere in between. So that that really presents a huge challenge for our students and our families. Our two largest areas of population are Annapolis and Glen Burnie, hence we are here um, in the Glen Burnie cluster. So over the past years as a community school, we have really worked to build relationships and provide opportunities for our students and families that have been previously difficult for them to access. And so this year, I'd like to just highlight some of our, what I'm, our, they're small wins, but they are massive wins and gains. So um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at our infographic. And I'm gonna start with the green section, the academic enrichment and attendance. I wanna start by saying our students really struggle with attendance and engage participation in class. And in conversations with them, a lot of them say the reason is they just don't like it. They don't see any reason for what they're doing. They could be making money doing other things. And so in an effort to connect our students with those things that they say they want, this year we have really focused on providing them career focused programming. And so you can see in our infographic, this is actually the second number, 35 of our students have participated in career focused programming during the school day. And um, Approximately 15 of those were high school students, 10th and 11th grade students. Uh, we partnered with the Community Action Agency who has provided um, what they are calling Each One Teach One workshops, where they bring community members into our school to speak with our students about different types of careers. And they are things that are different and unique, not your typical things. For example, we had one guy here who's an entrepreneur who owns a flower shop, which really connected with one of our students who wants to be a florist when she leaves school. Um, but the highlight of this, and actually the picture is in the orange bubble here, but the highlight of this was we had on April 25th, our first ever career day for elementary and middle school students. And 20 of our students participated in that, and we only have 24 middle and elementary school students, so this was the majority of them. They had a panel interview where they talked with a whole bunch of different um, Folks like from career, uh, from Cat South, um, Lori Fowler from Service Learning, Anne Arundel Workforce Development, and then they had um, just a regular sort of one-to-one uh, -one conversation with different folks. And you can see in the picture here they're having a conversation with our nurse. This was fantastic. They were so engaged. They loved it, and we're already hearing them talk about different types of things that they want to do when they grow up. So the need remains, and we're going to continue to dive deeply into those barriers that are providing that are getting to our students coming to school and being engaged, um, and. One of those things that we are doing that we will continue to do is we've had over 20 students being supported directly one-on-one -on -one with our Alt-1 um, teacher who is going to their homes, making phone calls, really working to bring those students into the building. Um, moving forward, um, let's look at the um, our family engagement. Um, it says two plus generation on here, but I'm calling it family engagement because our folks at Phoenix, our families and, and guardians, they really struggle to engage with their students in the building, with programs, with events, and opportunities provided. And so what we have uncovered through our observations and conversations is uh, three really big barriers to that. And one of those is they don't see the relevance to what is happening in the school to their lives. And negative experiences is the other one that they've had with schools. So what we've done this year, we've offered a number of things. We've had one, we had wonderful success with the cluster focused uh, virtual cook-alongs that one of my colleagues mentioned. Um, but the thing I wanna highlight is we decided to have a honor roll celebration for all of our students who earned honor roll. And 35% of those students who earned the honor roll had a family member attend the celebration during the school day, came for lunch, saw their kids honored. Um, and that's the picture that's in the green, um, the green bubble there at the room. This can't even capture the awesomeness that was the room with the balloons and the nice tablecloths. It just was a fantastic experience. And so I want to share two quick stories um, just to illustrate how positive it is when our family Families see their students being recognized for something positive. So after the honor roll celebration, one of our moms came up to me and I mean, she was literally in tears and she was just telling me how 
how grateful she was that not only was her daughter recognized, but that mom was invited to come see her daughter recognized. And mom was just so, she was just, she was in tears. It was just so important to her. Um, and then the second thing, um, going back to the career day, the following day after career day, uh, one of our students, um, I'll call him P, um, his guardian dropped him off. And I happened to be in the office that at that moment. And I said, oh, wait, hey, P was at our career day yesterday. Now, let me just tell you guys, P is a tough kid. He's got a lot of behavior issues. Um, but I said, you know what? He was fantastic at our career day. He was engaged. He was talking. He was asking questions. Guardian lit up and said, P has been coming home, talking about how much he loves coming to this school, even though he doesn't always show that in his actions. But he's telling his family that the staff members here are, are, are you know, kind to me. They love me. They're helping me. Um, and Guardian was saying, I, I'm just so happy that you all are doing this for our kids. So it's tough, but we're slowly making strides in building those relationships. And that is what matters. And at this point, I will turn it over to Mr. Elliott to talk about our last two uh, data points. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about the social emotional component that we have and the need for students at Phoenix who have so many emotional and behavioral challenges. Um, there have been a lot of instability in their life and they've experienced a lot of conflicts and trauma. So the research that we have shows a positive and consistent relationship is a folk has been one of our focal points here at the Phoenix Academy, which leads us into the, the data point. You know, we have over 20 plus students that have consistently attended our mentoring groups program that we have here in the school, trying to get connections with, them, with folks that have cultural experiences they do so they can open up and have courageous and honest, transparent conversations and develop good, healthy relationships. Uh, we sponsored so far three groups, um, one for young, well, two young men, and it's, it might be four groups, Ms. Beasley. We have a young lady, we have two young ladies groups and then we have two men mentoring groups. Um, one comes on Monday and one comes on Thursday. There's an overlap between the men's mentoring group and they get to see the perspective of two different individuals um, within the community. And they've had conversations as far as, you know, positive lifestyles, things to do that are healthy living. And for the most part, many of our young men, we saw that the suspension rate for these young fellows um, go down tremendously. Even when they are having issues and it's in conflict, They've learned how to mediate those issues with their when they have issues with their um, similar peers and and work things out. So it's been a healthy thing going forward for us, and with something we like to continue, which is our mentoring component. Going forward, our goal is just to expand it, and to, and our ultimate goal would be lovely to have a mentor for every person, someone that all students can go to. So that's something that we're striving and we're working on. The physical and health needs our students. You know, many of our students here at Phoenix Academy. Um, they come from throughout the county, but one of the common threads seem to be that lower social economics and food insecurities being an issue. So one of the things that we've done and partner with, um, I forget the name of the group that we partner with for the food bank, um, but giving out over 160 bags of food for students, staff members that may need it because we never know what's going on with certain folks, but making sure we provide healthy nutritional food for students um, and their families. We also have a barber that comes to the school. Now he goes along with the healthy limb, but also mentoring where the students enjoy getting a professional haircut is a mobile barber that comes to our school and works with our young men cutting their hairs. But he also mentors them because they open up about entrepreneurship and different things they can do with their lives going forward. Ms. Beasley. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Um, so I just want to wrap up and say um, we really hope that you've been able to get a glimpse of the work that we're doing and all that is ahead of us. Um, it's not easy working to impact our students and families who've had so many difficulties and barriers and just negativity in their way. But our continued goal over the upcoming years is to maintain our consistency with our students, continuing to provide access for our families and celebrating the positive things our students achieve. We are aiming to build strong and positive relationships that start before the need for intervention interventions so that in the hopes that when those intervention moments arrive, they are received well and the impact can be made. So, and um, I will just say that um, I am just so appreciative to work for a staff that loves our students and families so well, um, despite all of the things. So I'm I'm excited about how we're just going to continue to wrap around our students and our families and really look forward to some great impacts in our future. 
Thank you all.